Well, here we are at the Langham Hotel with Spandau Ballet, Tony Hadley and Martin Kemp. Welcome to New Zealand. Thank you very much. Hey, Thanks, good, to, good to be good here. Yeah. Yeah. Yet another nice day, you. yet another luxury hotel. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it kind of gets a bit like, you know, but, but it's, uh, it's not very often you come to New Zealand. It's a, it's a long old trip, but uh, yeah, happy to be here. And everyone's been, everyone since we've been here has been so lovely. But it's an interesting sort of trip because you're here to promote not um, necessarily a record, though you can, and not necessarily yeah. you're not here to play, but actually to do a film, uh, Soul Boys of the Western World. So how did this all start? Well, I, I suppose what really you know was the catalyst for it, in a sense, was the fact that we've got such a story to tell. I mean, most you know rock documentaries are like, hey, aren't we great? And there's the Enorma Dome, and, and it, it's all about kind of just how brilliant you are. Where our story is somewhat different, whether you are into Spano Valley or not, it, it's, it's a sort of love affair that went wrong, triumph, mm. and then, you know, down the pan kind of thing, and then, and then obviously rediscovering our friendship uh, and love of the band again. So it's, it's, that was really, you know, we had a story to tell. But the I, other I, I think that's why the, the film works on so many different levels, is that it's not just about a rock band. It, mm. it's a, it appeals to people that, even if you're not a Spandau fan, it appeals mm. to people because it crosses the border into the story is just about, it's about friendship and the ups and downs of friendship that everyone can relate to. Mm. You know, we have a, an extraordinary story, you know, mm. but, but even if your story is all quite ordinary, you can still relate to that kind yeah. of friendship. I mean, there's not many bands that break up for 19 years and then get themselves back together again. I mean, and George Henkin, the director, I mean, to be honest, I mean, she was like our therapist almost. And we, <laughs> we, we spoke to her for hours and hours expensive and hours. About, and expensive though, but about our, our view of the band, our view of the, the triumphs and, and, and the breakup and everything and what it was like to be in Spano Valley. So, and she very bravely put together all this um, documentary footage uh, but, but also, apart from just the bands, you've got the 60s in London, Soho, so punk, punk yeah. the Thatcher years. It's the one thing I really want to say is, is it's not just about the band, it's actually a docu no. document of a period of time, the, yeah. the 80s, where there was a, a real flowering and, a, and the growing up, it was the start of the New England, you know, the modern I England, think you're right. the whole new romantic mm -hmm. thing. And I, I love the quote that you know you guys made a whole new look. It came out of the clubs. Yeah. You made a whole new look where you could get the world's greatest suit out of an op shop and wear your girl's blouse, or your sister's blouse, yeah. and actually go down <laughs> the street and not get beaten up. You know? Yeah. Well, it, it wasn't the sister's blouse. <laughs> <laughs> it was your mum's. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I mean, it, it, what what Spandau did, what Spandau worked, we represented a whole movement cultural mo movement that was happening in the uh, uh, late, se late 70s, early 80s. And in the same way that uh, The Who represented the mods, or mm. the Rolling Stones represented the rockers, Spandau represented that, in brackets, new romantic movement. Mm. And it was a revolution because uh, we'd had rock and roll, grimy old rock and roll, yeah. very old rock and roll, then we had punk, you know, dirty old rock and roll, and then suddenly uh, people actually wanted to look a million bucks. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, the, I mean, you know, we, we, I was into the punk thing massively. I mean, it was, it was the first time that, that you know, that you realised that anyone could be a musician. You didn't have to be a virtuoso to be in a rock band. And, and punk was exciting, I mean, you know, uh, you know, London was an amazing place in the mid '70s and stuff, but it was never meant to to last. It was it sort of imploded on itself, and out of that, and and the kind of the, the the strikes and the mayhem that was going on in Britain at the time, were these bunch of dandies, and it, and it was about living it up, but it was about, you know, let's not be depressed about things. Let's do the complete opposite, and. And there was this massive fashion movement mm. and electronica from Germany. I wonder, did you keep the clothes? I was looking at, to cut a long story short, yeah. the video of that, and there's somebody's in a tartan uh, jumpsuit and, you know, uh, trouser lengths go anywhere from, Do you know, know I, I don't know where half the stuff is. Oh, some I've, of it's in the, in the attic, probably some of it in my mum's. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've but got it, quite a lot of it. Uh, I mean, they're great memories, you know, and what you have to remember here is that we were wearing exactly what the kids were wearing in the clubs. It wasn't yeah. a dress. I would be embarrassed if I was sitting here now and a dresser had come mm. along, or a stylist, what bands have nowadays, had come along and said, you have to wear this. Mm. And looking back on it, I would have been embarrassed. But it wasn't like that. They, they were the clothes that we believed mm. in, in mm. the same way that you know mods wore, wore their two-tone suits. Mm. It, that's what it was, it was a, people it was in town were, were wearing. Mm. And it, it, you, know, you can look back at it in one hand and laugh, but then if you look back at it, 
in, in relation to the rest of the 80s, and you can see how every sh shop in the high street was selling that stuff, mm. even Lady Di mm. was wearing that stuff, then you understand the, the, the moment of in time I mean, that it represents. And, and you just mentioned Lady Di, yeah. and I have to do that, because she loved you guys. And, and, <laughs> and she uh, was very, very beautiful and lovely herself. And she, you met up three times, uh, but she said, I can't come clubbing with you because of them. Is that true? <laughs> Is it because of the, no, the family? Is that the, true? Oh, I'm not, I'm not sure it was specifically that. But I mean, she was really charming, really lovely. I mean, mm. we met her at Live Aid yeah. and, uh, we, and um, you know, Prince Charles was, was a cool dude as well. And, and uh, Kensington Palace, we met Princess Diane, Prince Charles. And they were always, and she was always absolutely charming. And, and what, a, you know, a, a tragic end to, to what was a, a lo lovely woman. So. Mm. But I, you know, going back to the fashion thing, it really probably was the last decade where fashion and music was just totally intrinsically linked. And you know, we haven't seen that. It's, it's, it, you could still walk down the street in the 80s and shock the establishment. Mm. And I suppose now we're the generation of, uh, you know, adults and stuff who's, we've been through punk, we've been through heavy metal, we've been through everything, we've been through the romantic thing. So nothing really shocks us anymore. Uh, you so, know, I wished there was a movement. Yeah, I kind of do as well. Yeah, and say that's what the kids are up yeah. to today. Yeah. But there isn't. It's very yeah. conservative, that. Yeah. Really yeah. conservative, actually. And of course, you uh, you were also a, an incredible melting pot of the music. I mean, the, the film is called Soul mm. Boys of, of the Western yeah. World, but you you had more than that because to cut a long story short, has kraut techno. Yeah, uh, yeah. Synthesizers, yeah, I mean, you have rock in there, you <coughs> have, but you also have soul, and you also have, because Tony, you've got a great set of pipes. Thank you very you've much. You've also got yes. this great crooning, great huge, huge yeah. voice, so it's sort of like if Frank Sinatra went to a German nightclub, you know, <laughs> and played yeah. some rock and roll. You know? well, well, but, but when we first walked in the Blitz, which was the club, the home of kind of in yeah. brackets, new romantics, um, it, the, Rusty Egan, who was on the, who was the DJ at the time, that's what he was playing. Was all yeah. German electro rock, uh, Düsseldorf, Ultravox, System of Romance. And a, and a band takes uh, its influences from everywhere. You know, mm. that's why the bands are great. That's mm. why you know you take five people with maybe uh, you know a little bit of talent, but you put that all together and it becomes one big mass of talent. Yeah. Mm. And we do create a sound. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Mm. I mean. When we get together, I mean, on the new material that we did with Trevor Horn for um, the the new Great Stitz album, I mean, three new songs. But you know, we haven't recorded in sort of four or five years. But as soon as we get together, it just sounds like yeah. Spano Valley, mm. and we all have, a, I think, a very individual way of playing, uh, a, a unique way of playing. And when you put it together, as Martin said, it just creates a sound. Um, yeah, we're, we're lucky boys. I mean, you know, you, you think about you know watching Top of the Pops as a kid. You sign your first record deal. Yeah, we've been up and down and everything, but but you know back together again and and, and still enjoying it and still loving it. That's right. Okay, so um, Soul Boys of the Western World is out in the yes. Uh but you've also um, announced a concert tour again. You you reformed yep. in 2010 and came to New Zealand, and that yep. was uh, I'm, I didn't go, and I've kicked myself since because everyone who did it was a great well, concert. Well, it was a great concert. <laughs> come this time. Oh, come this time. Made a tent. Yeah. So you're come coming on on May in May 2015, May. Auckland Victory. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be good. What do you bring? Well, we bring everything. I mean, you know, uh, we'll bring our production, but more importantly, ourselves uh, and, and the songs and a great performance. So, so what, what is a Spandau Ballet production now? Is oh, it, well, I, let me tell you something. Is it uh, an amazing uh, two, wardrobe? 2009, <laughs> 2009, we went out and uh, on tour and we toured the world. And I yeah. reckon that Vector gig that we played in New Zealand was yeah. up there in the top three. Yeah, it was a crazy. That was the first time Spandau Ballet had ever played New Zealand. Yeah. We were meant to come in 1985, don't ask me why we didn't, but anyway. So, um, yeah, the audience were up. As soon as we hit the stage, they were up. I mean, you know, we, we, go, we love performing. That's what we do better than anything, I think. You know what and, we bring? Uh, we bring a show where you know every record. Yeah, and it's inclusive. Except for the three new songs. Well, uh, you <laughs> will know them. You will be playing them, so by the <laughs> time we come them. in, that everyone will know those songs anyway. So but you know every cool. record. Yeah, when yeah, when yeah. you come to a spandau show, and you all dandied up in fancy dancy clothes, or, or well, um, you know, I'm I'm a great believer in, in growing old reasonably gracefully. Yeah. There's nothing worse well, than yeah. than <laughs> guys of our age trying. 
you know, what was fashionable then is not fashionable now. No. So I take the Robert Palmer school of uh, a sort of dress. Well, we can, we can see it here now. Is, Look at you, you're in a blazer. What's this, by the way? What's that? That's, um, that's a poppy, because uh, yeah. for Remembrance Day. Yeah, remem uh, and, um, which is November 11th. 11th, 11th yeah, yeah, uh, yeah 11th, in the 11th. UK. Here it's Anzac. Uh, April, it's Anzac, April yeah. So, so this, in, the, the poppy thing is massive. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we're still fighting all over the world, and yeah. unfortunately. Uh, yeah. But it's to remember all those people that have well, sacrificed their lives. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. So, but you're in the blazer, and you are obviously in the well, the slightly more urban, um, urbane urban. There yeah. we go. I'll give that. I'm, a I'm, I'm, all, I'm always got a jacket and stuff on, and they're very nice buttons. I don't know if you can see the buttons, but they're very kind of interesting. <laughs> and, and the inside is, look, I'll just give you like that. Look at that. Oh, look at that. It's there a we bit go. Jazzy, yeah. Yeah. I'll pick your holiday destination. <laughs> <laughs> awesome! Thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Um, thank I've, you. Very much. I've seen the film and it is. Did you like I, it? I loved it. Oh, not, oh, thanks. Just, not just because of the great spinal tapers type story, yeah, 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 up yeah. and down of the rock and roll, but as a document of the eighties. Yeah. You know, seeing yeah. screaming people in candy coloured clothes and at Live Aid and Wembley yeah. and just the hair and, and yeah. just and the way you progressed the sound and took over the world was it's a fantastic oh, thank story. You. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Thank yeah. Thanks you. very much. Cheers, it. mate. I'll see you. Um, I'll see you in May. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll uh, have to go through my, uh, my wardrobe and see if I can find my uh, dancing <laughs> shirts. <laughs>